Welcome to our new video. Today, we'll be discussing the recent trend in the crypto market worldwide, with a focus on the latest developments. Coinbase asserts cryptos on its platform beyond SEC's jurisdiction, countering regulators' lawsuit. Coinbase and the US Securities and Exchange Commission, or SEC. Coinbase, one of the largest crypto exchanges in the United States, has filed its answer to the SEC's lawsuit, arguing that the regulator has violated its due process and is overstepping its jurisdiction. Let's take a closer look. Coinbase has claimed that digital assets listed on its platform do not fall under the purview of the SEC. The SEC sued Coinbase earlier this month, alleging that a dozen cryptocurrencies offered on their platform were unregistered securities. In its response filed today, Coinbase argues that these cryptocurrencies are not investment contracts and therefore should not be classified as securities. Coinbase has previously made similar arguments in public statements, but their court filing provides further explanation. The company asserts that cryptocurrencies on its secondary market platform are not part of any contractual arrangements where a promoter is selling an asset. Coinbase points to the Supreme Court's Howey case as an example to support its position. According to Coinbase, the issuers of these tokens owe no obligations to investors, further supporting their claim that these transactions are not securities. Coinbase argues that the value lies in the assets themselves rather than in the businesses that generated them. In addition to their argument on securities classification, Coinbase questions the SEC's authority over the crypto industry. They claim that current SEC Chair Gary Gensler changed his position on the regulator's authority between taking office earlier this year and MID 2022. Coinbase also highlights that they have actively sought regulation and that Congress is currently examining the issue of crypto regulation. Coinbase asserts that the SEC's lawsuit violates their due process rights and constitutes an abusive process. The company points out its compliance with multiple regulatory bodies and its continuous request for guidance from the SEC. Coinbase claims that the SEC's actions reflect an undisclosed change in its own view of authority. In a separate document filed with the court, Coinbase alleges that its due process rights were violated by the SEC when it brought the lawsuit. They also suggest that the SEC's lawsuit may violate the major questions doctrine. Coinbase has requested permission to file for judgment and has proposed a seven-week schedule for motions and responses. This legal battle between Coinbase and the SEC continues to unfold, with both sides presenting their arguments. As the crypto industry closely watches this case, it is clear that the outcome could have significant implications for the regulation of digital assets in the United States. We will keep you updated on any developments. MasterCard to continue crypto foray with beta launch of Blockchain App Store. In its continued efforts to embrace blockchain technology, MasterCard has announced plans to launch the beta version of its multi-token network, or MTN, this summer. The product is expected to be initially rolled out in the United Kingdom. MasterCard aims to use this test version as a platform for developing pilot applications and use cases in collaboration with financial institutions, fintechs, and central banks. The MTN's success hinges upon convincing developers to build on MasterCard's permissioned blockchain. It's being touted as transformative for the company's payment capabilities. To achieve this, MasterCard is promoting its Mountain Innovation Sprint, calling on teams to develop apps on its platform. The first round of applications will be powered by tokenized bank deposits, a concept gaining popularity among Central and MasterCard aims to showcase the potential of its permission blockchain. By partnering with various institutions, they want to demonstrate how this technology can transform the world of payments, ensuring safe transfers of tokens and assets. Safety is a key concern for MasterCard. With recent high-profile hacks in the crypto world, MasterCard is emphasizing the importance of secure transactions. They have developed the MasterCard Crypto Credential, a tool that provides aliases for sharing wallet addresses and prevents unintended transactions. Safety is undoubtedly a priority, especially given recent exploits. In fact, MasterCard has entered partnerships with several crypto exchanges, such as Binance, Bit2Me, Bitso, and Bybit allowing users to make purchases using their digital assets. Sony Network invests in Japanese Web3 startup to spur mass adoption. Sony Network Communications, a Sony subsidiary, and Startel Labs, a Japanese Web3 infrastructure tech company, have revealed a new business collaboration and a $3.5 million investment. The investment aims to establish a strong foundation for the widespread adoption of Web3. Startel Labs is focused on developing Web3 services and products, which include bridging real-world assets with the Web3 ecosystem. Their mission is to create all-in-one solutions for Web3 development. With this collaboration, Sony hopes to support Startel's mission and promote smooth experiences for general users. Sota Watanabe, the CEO of Startel Labs, expressed excitement about partnering with Sony. He believes that partnering with a tech giant like Sony will allow a Web3 startup like Startel to learn and leverage valuable knowledge. 
Watanabe also mentioned their all-in-one solution, which will enable users to interact with the Web3 space without extensive knowledge of blockchain technology. In addition to the investment, Jun Watanabe, the president and representative director of Sony Network Communications, has been appointed as a director of Startail Labs. This move highlights Sony's commitment to collaboration and its belief in the potential of Web3 technology. This is not the first time Sony has been involved in Web3 initiatives. The company's gaming division, Sony Interactive Entertainment, filed a patent in March of 2023 that allows users to transfer and use non-fungible tokens, NFTs, across multiple gaming platforms. Sony Network Communications, known for its powerful fiber-optic internet service, is now making significant strides in the Web3 space. This investment in Startail Labs reinforces Sony's dedication to emerging technologies and its desire to drive mass adoption of Web3. Number 7. Grayscale's Bitcoin and Ethereum funds generate remarkable revenue. Grayscale, a subsidiary of Barry Silbert's digital currency group, has quietly had its best month in estimated revenues since May 2022. According to the Block's data dashboard, Grayscale's flagship products, the Grayscale Bitcoin Trust, GBTC, and Ethereum Fund, ETHE, generated an estimated $44.13 million in revenue. This calculation is based on the value of the fund's total US dollar holdings each month multiplied by Grayscale's fees. GBTC has a 2% annual fee, while ETHE has a 2.5% annual fee. However, the competition in the crypto asset management market is heating up. BlackRock's recent filing for a spot Bitcoin ETF has breathed new life into the industry. According to data compiled by European issuer CoinShares, funds saw nearly $200 million in inflows last week alone. In response to BlackRock's filing, several other firms, including Bitwise, Invesco, and WisdomTree, have resubmitted their applications for a spot in Bitcoin ETF. Grayscale has its own plans to upgrade GBTC to a spot Bitcoin ETF. However, it is currently in a legal battle with the US Securities and Exchange Commission to do so. Grayscale first submitted its filing in October 2021 to trade GBTC as an ETF on the New York Stock Exchange. This upgrade would give Grayscale Regulation M relief, allowing the firm to redeem and create shares, something it is currently restricted from doing. Despite its ambitions, an upgrade and increased competition may impact Grayscale's earnings. Analyst Seyfert, who recently joined an episode of The Scoop, believes that if BlackRock's ETF is approved, it may decrease Grayscale's valuation, as they would be forced to lower fees sooner than expected. Additionally, if GBTC converts to an ETF, there could be potential outflows from the fund. That's all for tonight's cryptocurrency news. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.